Hello, good morning, everybody. Um, I had I think I'd shown like the initial draft of this deck on stream like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. We ended up going on like crazy win streak, crazy brew streak, and and also I think something that's becoming very clear is that the modern leagues are very open at the moment. That the shit is just it's wild. It's <laughs> it's it's kind of the wild west at the moment. Um. But I've been working on this Just Guy Mentor list for a while. You know, we've played a, a several mentor strategies over the years, uh, usually revolving around unearthing a Monastery Mentor and then casting a bunch of spells in the same turn. Th this is when Monastery Mentor is really, really good, is when you basically put it into play for one mana and then cast several spells. This is an incredibly powerful play, something you really want to set up for. Um, in the past, we've kind of played at a diminished card quality so that we could splash black for unearth and like the I like fatal push i think is like generally worse than holy heat not getting access to dragon rage's channeler kind of stinks um and also not getting to play underworld Bre breach is like so sick in the stack but you just like the mana just doesn't really work i think for four colors they printed i guess now a couple of sets ago a white unearth uh helping hand uh which is it's worse it doesn't cycle the card enters tapped although the entering tap matters a little bit less um, but it, it allows you to splash red instead of black for like, for Chandler, the heats and the un underworld breach, which I think is like an incredible package here. I've also been testing, uh, archeologist in this list, kind not exactly over snapcaster mage, but, um, as I think, I think archeologist is an awesome enabler in the deck where it gets unearthed really well. And then it also like can mill over your mentor, dig for your helping hand. It also fuels your underworld breaches. I think it can also mill over faithful mending for value. This is something that I really like about archeologist in the Esper mentor deck is that if you mill over a mending and another hit, it's kind of like you got an extra card. Um, I know that the ephemerate looks really weird in the list, uh, but the card ephemerate is actually pretty good with Monastery Mentor. It's like a protection spell that triggers Mentor twice. It's like, it's kind of the best protection spell you can play with Mentor. Uh, rebound and <laughs> whenever you cast a non-creature spell is is pretty powerful. I, I kind of want to play two. I think that one is is likely the right number. Uh, but I've been like, I've been, I think the first one is like um, almost mandatory include, I think with four archaeologists, four mentor, which is very, very weird. I probably split consider and preordain. Uh, a lot, a lot of people are, do like, do, they, they I, in my opinion, people super duper overthink preordain and consider. And in my mind, I, I just think, I think that preordain is a lot better. I understand in this list, you have some extra surveil value. So it's like a little bit closer, but preordain, it just sees it. It just sees twice the cards. Um, it just sees twice the cards, and I, especially like I think if, if I was gonna play twenty lands, oh whoops, oopsie doopsie. If I was gonna play an extra land, then um, maybe you could play consider, but also like nineteen lands with three drops in the deck, you kind of just need preordains. Uh, to some extent, I just I just kind of find like like the the tournaments are just small and like not super competitive. I kind of, I like, I like bigger formats. They're just like more, more interesting, but if it was ever like a more supported thing and a more popular thing, maybe I would play it. Remember specifically said Luris. Yeah. Yeah. If Luris was still legal, I'd, I'd probably play like one or two in the main. So no Scion. So graveyard and archaeologist could could helping hand it graveyard faithful mending get a little bit of value we have delirium so they, they clearly don't have fire ice in their hand right now but if they were to top deck it they wouldn't be blowing me out they didn't get like a surveil land in a turn oh no you could you could have had that in play oh yeah let me pay out the prediction how to like the my deck yesterday. i think it was pretty good we like we're nine and three with it overall Pretty good record. Got a Solitude. You probably don't have a Fury. Hmm. 
kind of close between helping hand plus breach bobble a ton of cards versus archaeologists look for red look for like a mentor to like combo off with mentor let's attack for six first could draw a ton of cards but i, I kind of feel like i would it seems like to me i have the ability to really dig for a mentor so i, I guess I, I guess because i can just cast the helping hand off breach I should I should helping hand archaeologist first. Uh, maybe look for a burn spell. Although I think I think this counter spell is uh, likely just good enough for me to to keep keep up. And I did mill the mentor, so this is this is kind of perfect. I just hold up counter spell this turn. The next turn I get to go breach helping hand mentor, uh, and then with double channeler we can make infinite monk tokens, kind of. Could try to find mentor up bobble suppose. I guess that's a good point. We could have there's a there's a somewhat good chance we could also just mentor this turn. We don't have like infinite cards in our library though. With double channeler, we 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 would have gotten to dig pretty deep. Um uh, my opponent is not doing anything. If my opponent doesn't do anything, could it be correct to wait a turn? Maybe play around endurance. Drew an ephemerate. Yeah, ephemerate's pretty nice. Let me to see what they what they have. Hardcast subtlety. You playing Hell in Five? They they risen reefed into a land. I'm gonna let this resolve. I'm gonna let this resolve. Then I'm gonna ephemerate the channeler that they blocked, and I'm gonna combo off. Put it on Glimpse combo. I think they're more likely just on, like, Risen Reef Karuga control. Uh, but it, I guess it could be Glimpse Combo. Does Glimpse Combo play Subtlety? Maybe they do. The thing, that's the thing about Glimpse Combo is there's just, like, infinite different versions. And then whenever someone, like, just high rolls with it and they 5-0, they go, I've broken the format, baby. The key was Glimpse Combo the whole time. But the deck, it's almost like, no matter how you build it, the deck's just not that different. Oh yeah, you can't Karuga with Glimpse. Okay, so it's definitely not Glimpse. <laughs> Brains are funny, because like, I know you can't... <laughs> I know you can't uh, Crashing Footballs, Karuga. <laughs> but I just, just not enough Glimpse combo. Okay, so they have a Solitude. So my, my ability to... The amount of monks I can make has, has gone down a little bit here. They only have two cards in their hand, though. Of course, we're graveyarding anything. Okay, helping hand my monastery mentor. I'll try to leave the bolt in the yard, maybe. Good anger modern. Yeah, I think I, I I sincerely think insidious roots would be too good with anger uh, in the format. I think it's pretty good as is, like the the jund roots we have, and then. Anger would just go so crazy. Is that top card still to Shauna's Tidebinder? Wow. So it looks like we won't be able to keep the bolt in the yard if I want to bobble an extra time. And I want to bobble an extra time. That's an extra monk. An extra card. Also Fable. I mean, I think Fable is like probably too fair a card to go in most Anger decks. It would be pretty... It, 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 there's a lot of synergy though, so maybe I'm wrong about that. F Anger would be really good. I, I think I think it would be a somewhat dangerous print into the format, but it, it would maybe be okay. Like Graveyard Hate is like super, super efficient. And to, to some extent, like I, I was feeling like Graveyard based decks needed a buff and then I started to do pretty well with like Surveil, Breach Combo, and Gorios and... Now I don't exactly feel that way anymore, but 
I still would like to see Graver decks buffed a little bit. Okay, your turn. They're drawing Tishana's Tidebinder, which is kind of interesting against Monastery Mentor. Anger could give Dredge the heat that Goros has. So we were talking about this the other day. Anger is not good in Dredge at the moment. All of your cards enter tapped or they enter at the end of your turn. Like, it's just not... It's not good. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. Unless, I, unless I'm missing something. Okay, hopefully they hit another Nissa off this. Like, it's not good with... it's it, With Narcomable, you're attacking for one. It, it, it's good with exactly Oxybagonis. Is like literally like Oxymagonus and Narcomeba, I guess. But that's just like not enough for you to really want to play Anger. It's possible you could build a version of Dredge that can utilize it better, but I'm not really sure how you do that. Oh, they have Cyan of Draco? They decided to cast that instead of Omnath. Okay. Um, beating just Leyline Scion is tough enough having to do it with this much power and toughness is going to be really tricky but we may be able to so two more mentors so i know my opponent has tishana's tide binder so if i go if i cast breach i get to surveil a card into the yard then they're going to cast tide binder on my mentor I'll counterspell the Mentor. There will be five cards in my yard, including the counterspell, six cards in the yard. Then I can bobble at least two more times, which is going to be a total of four prowess triggers here. Seems like I need to do a turn, another turn of setup. We're going to take seven, down to four. Three cards in their hand. I'm going to go ahead and cast this Mending at end of turn. I really need to fill up my graveyard. They're going to get to Tishana's Tidebinder, one of my mentors, but that'll just have to be okay. And then the math on this turn is going to be crazy, but boy, boy, will this be an awesome turn. Let me, let me get some more auto yields going what a stack yeah anger could be interesting in amalia i do that amalia sam deck is really good too so i think i'm discarding the mentor almost for sure don't think i need another counter spell and also just getting more cards in the yard is super valuable here, of course. Chandler is a really, really nice pickup. So I mostly care about the prowess triggers on my stuff that's in play. But I guess like my mentor is one of those things. So I think I'm going to go Chandler, heat the tide. Oh, I can't heat the tide binder though. Okay, subtlety. So we'll go ahead and counterspell this as their last card in hand. Get some triggers. So yeah, I just I just have to make my board big enough to to win here. Um, I don't know if it's going to be enough. I think it likely will be. I think this likely will be enough. I, I, I should be able to trigger prowess on each of my things like 10 times or something. But maybe that's not enough. They they obviously have a big, big wall up. I guess I can heat just some, something of my own too. I, like, I only have 20 cards in my library is kind of the problem. So how much can my opponent gain? They can gain nine plus five. They also have five blockers to my six attackers. Heat on mentor. I mean I can heat yeah, I can heat something, sure. Okay. 
Can I, can I stock? I feel like the stack triggers automatically never works. Like, I, I have stack triggers automatically clicked, but... I, I have played a bit of Reunion in this deck in the past. I, I, I think you can play it. I think that it ends up being pretty win more, and, like, I prefer to play Faithful Mending in my Counterspell deck. Just don't deck myself and I win next turn. Do I? Yeah, I, I guess is it is it better to try to win next turn? Because I'm not sure I can get enough prowess triggers. I can I can chump. Oh no, I can't. Okay, so I, I can remove delirium from myself and then gain it back to block both of their flyers. Just get reach combo with mentor. There's no combo, but we're we're just you know. Mentor is the combo, I guess. They're just drawing steam vents, right? So don't we don't need the counter spell. It does seem like I'm just not going to have lethal this turn. I don't, I don't have enough prowess attackers this turn. But if I get just a ton more and then I can... Like, this is always kind of, I guess, the issue with with, with Monastery Mentors. You kind of don't know. Do you go and do you make more tokens this turn or do you go more in prowess? I guess this is an extreme example. I kind of like keeping this. Just as a good prowess trigger for next turn. So I think what I'll do is I'll go cast this. And then I'll go bobble, exile, breach, scalding tarn, counterspell. And then my graveyard is mentor, mending, counterspell. And then when the breach goes to the yard, I'll have delirium again. Opponent will lose all creatures. I don't... They won't lose all of their creatures here. I, I can maybe still attack, right? But, like, the problem is... My opponent can just block everything on one monk. Or if I attack with, like, everything, they can block... They can kill two monks in combat really profitably. Right? Yeah, but maybe I, maybe I, maybe I still do have an attack. I only have... I have six creatures... If I attack with everything, they go... I guess maybe they don't play around one more in combat. Yeah, I guess they can't... Yeah, they can't really double block super effectively. Yeah, let's... let's. I think we do have an attack here. Was leaving two instants intentional? I mean, it just doesn't really matter because Bobble plus a breach is four. I'm mostly just trying to get make sure I don't time out because it's still game one. I'm at 13 minutes on the clock. Can they unholy heal? Well, unholy does, doesn't kill any of my things. It just, like... Triggers prowess one time. I'm gonna have to start playing fast. This is probably the biggest clock disparity I've ever had, but you know, hard to blame me this game, right? We have perfect info. Seems like we won. Yeah, I think we're gonna win this game. Kind of wild to beat Scion Draco and this many creatures, uh, just in combat, <laughs> but. Nice. I also d did not realize I could have just cast the heat now for for lethal, but it's okay. If you heat, you win. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize that that was the case. I was just trying to click through, and not, I, I I felt like if I was wasting my time doing math, this was maybe a way for me to uh, lose the game, lose the match because I'm timing out. But did miss lethal. But we, we will have lethal this next turn. The problem is lag and whatever. Kruga in the hand, I can't cast it. Chump chump. So my opponent is gonna gain seven up to ten. So block block. Oh, I can just attack. I can just literally I don't even have to trigger prowess. I just have to attack. 
Oh, so they're at 10 right now. So I, I do have to trigger prowess one time. Oh, I didn't turn off my audio instead of fucking shit. <laughs> okay, but now they're taking 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19, 20. ZZZ. You, this game is ZZZ? If this game is ZZZ, there is no pleasing you as a Magic viewer. <laughs> if this game is ZZZ, I, I question I question if you like Magic the Gathering. Unless I misunderstand what ZZZ means. I'm restarting Magic Online to combat lag. Most likely ZZZ in the client. I guess that's fair. I watch too much Haw. People always type like Resident Sleeper in the chat. They complain about it being boring. Like ZZZ usually in Twitch chat is like this game is boring, but I guess that's that's fair. Okay, I'm gonna bring in the wear tears. Um the fairies are probably okay. They probably don't have that much counter magic, but they do have like a bunch of instant speed stuff with like subtlety. Endurance, yeah, I think especially with endurance being a factor, let's bring in the Teferi. Um, I'm gonna cut the lightning bolt. I'm gonna, I think, I think you're gonna have like four endurances post board, so I'm gonna maybe go down to like a trim a helping hand trim archaeologist. I don't know, this could still counter spell that card. Revisited Riveteer's Charm in Sion Meta. No, it's kind of interesting though. I do like Riveteer's Charm a lot, it is, it is a little clunky, it's a super cool card. i play fast. Oh, I can draw another bubble. Do they have Scion? No Scion. Huge. We surveil a Delta into the graveyard. We untap. Opponent has ice. I guess ice I'm probably counterspelling. I have three counterspells. Like just <laughs> just actually use one to stop them from drawing a card is probably correct because I need them to stumble this next turn if possible. They don't have the ice though. And they they probably would have upkeeped it. People people like people just have fire ice and then they they just they just don't upkeep it a, a, a weird amount of the time lately, I feel. Teferi does look really nice here. Uh, we go a little shields down, but I think it's just like a little too much value to pass up on. Hard to imagine like a much better spot for Teferi. Best case scenario, they just recast their ley line this turn. Okay, another Risen Reef. Not the end of the world. They do find a land, four cards in their hand. One of them is Leyline of the Guild Pact. I draw a Monastery Mentor. I'm not going to cast anything, though, on my turn yet. Good old three mana, one, one. I'm always thinking you're going to play the Absinthe deck. You mean the Golgari deck? Well, I wanna, we're going to play it at some point this week. We might still play it today. Just continue to play what I want, right? All right, cast the Mending. I think I'm going to get, you know, we, we still have three helping hands in the deck. This deck is really wants to helping hand the Monastery Mentor, of course. Give it a helping hand. Um, I'm going to keep a land. Is Shredder no good? I think Archaeologist is better, but you could play Shredder over Archaeologist if you disagreed. I think Archaeologist is really excited. Oh, the Amalia deck? Well, the Amalia deck is now four color. Did did you did you not see that we played it like last week and went nine and one? It's pretty exciting. Yeah, we played Amalia with uh, four breakouts and went nine and one. Okay, we'll keep this mentor. Can you go mentor and then bobble a ton. 
I think I was going to keep the counter spell up, though. Is there a YouTube bit? I don't know if the, I don't know if it's up on YouTube yet, but there's at least a VOD. And, there's, and at the very minimum, there's the deckless link in the Mox field. Just play looting over mending if it could. Yeah, for sure. Pest control isn't pest control like an existing card. I guess not. Whoa, two mana destroy all non-land permanents with mana value one or less. Cycling for two. Poor hammer players. Could, literally could not catch a break. Why is it a mythic? Is that Marta Weagle? I think so. Supreme Verdict would be potentially bad. That was into too much else, probably. Get a big hit in this turn, too. Rest in peace back in standard? How, how good is that at the moment? I, I know I, I want a standard RCQ with squirming emergence. And, like, there was very little graveyard hate, although I did have to beat Soul Guide Lantern and Hearse in the top eight. There was one I, I had a pony who said that they were only playing Soul Guide Lantern because they couldn't find the, the dinosaur graveyard hate card. <laughs> I was like, dang it. I, I did still win. But I lost the game that they drew the <laughs> I lost the game that they drew the Soul Guide Lantern. Oh, Mythic for Limited makes sense, yeah. Okay, so I guess the secret to, and this is like the Nassif way, the secret to using 16 minutes of your clock in game one is to just win game two. Uh, yeah, throw back. It was actually, this is a great Gorya sideboard card. But because it's black white, you're not actually going to see it that often. Yeah, can someone link Memory Vessel? Cool, Memory Vessel. Five mana. Wait, is it just red Memory Jar? Each player exiles top seven library until next turn. Players may play any cards exiled this way. Okay. I love it. So we're against Titan. They're on a mold to five. Um, I've not played against Titan. I feel like it's so long. They've been hiding. That memory vessel is a reprint. Is it? I, I haven't seen this card at least. It might be. It's, it's very cool. I don't, I, don't, I don't likely think it'll do a lot in modern, but... This is a sweet card. So they make a token main phase, and I guess, are they going to bounce the saga? Kind of a rare line. I like it, though. Things get pretty easy if we can... Surveil a mentor into the RDA, I would imagine. Or sorry, find one off the the mending. Oh baby. Okay, we did find we we didn't find an untapped land, we did find a land. I guess I'm gonna discard ephemerate heat. Untapped land would be super duper game over. Okay. Not quite super duper game over yet. This gives me delirium. Let's go ahead and do that. Pest Control should have a poor little hammer boy while he stopped killing me. Yeah, I mean, the, the good news is, like, Pest Control probably at the moment would only see play in Espergorios, kind of like the only meta black white deck. The bad news is, uh, <laughs> if that card is cast against you, you can't win. But you're a hammer player, you're not winning that many games, anyways. <laughs> With peace and love. So Lally didn't get Bajuka bogged here. Let's 
Another monastery mentor into the graveyard. We're pretty likely to hit a land off preordain, but if we miss and they cast a Titan, we're just going to lose, so let's not. Yeah, scales, hammer, gore. Yeah, well, that was, pest control is pretty good, but it's uh, it's also just like not the kind of card that sees play unless the metagame is right for it. I'm going to keep this on Holy Heat. I was just thinking I would keep it on Holy Heat here. Notably, we don't have a Mishra's Bobble, but we, we can go helping hand another mentor, Preordain. With unholy heat up. Certainly, number one card we're looking for is a Mistress Bobble. We don't have like random lethal here. I think I'll do. I'll double check before we. Attack. Maybe if we find Bobble, we would. We do find Bobble. So I have uh oh, I only have I have two two, two I have the channeler and t -t -t two other attackers. <laughs> My stutter comes out of the weirdest moments sometimes. Okay, they back it up. So up a game against Titan. Cruising with the mentors today. With the wear tears and alpine moons, of course. I cut the lightning bolt. I'm gonna cut the ephemerates. Some of them are Force of Negation. Force of Negation is like a lot better on the draw against the Ring build, of course. Play actually one Force over Monastery Mentor number four. Yeah, Crushing in general lately. These are, the leagues are so like good and fun and like there's so much play to them. Shit just, 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 is just very good and modern at the moment, in my opinion. Having so much fun. Um, This hand is probably okay on the draw. Uh, like Just double counterspell in general is pretty good against Titan. If we... Got lucky enough to draw a red source in turn one. This hand is really nuts, and we're just pretty favored to find that second land in time. Didn't find it immediately. Um, I guess I was always casting the other bubble. Didn't really need to bubble myself there. We get three more looks at second land, and then we even have like a whole game three if we don't. Is there a non-ring build of Titan? I mean, there have been non-ring builds of Titan. I don't know how common they are right now. I think not very common. All right, opponents. I am prepared for death. Esper Mentor, Ben Jeskai Mentor. <laughs> I don't think so, but I've played a lot of both at this point. So they grab a Grazer, they play a Grazer, and then they can put Forest into play tapped. Oh, they have Growth Chamber. Okay. All right, we advance to game three. <laughs> Maybe it's actually the archaeologist that you can like never tap out for. Cyborg like this. Mentor also gets better if you can like sometimes just mentor with four sub. Let's try this. Am I up to date with spoilers? I'm sure I've missed some. Um, I'm kind of just waiting until the full sets out to like really dive into it at this point because there's just so much going on okay i'm gonna bottom both of these let's save the bobble for at least a turn We'll keep Channeler as to you. Then sandbag the Alpine Moon for the time being. You want them to, like, in, in these kind of spots, you want them to play Urza Saga if they have it. 
Although it kind of sinks they don't have Saga or Amulet right now to, for us to really exploit. I could Alpine Moon Slalesnia Sanctuary. It seems okay. It's a bit more enticing because I just have answers to other stuff. But now I'll just hold up Counterspell, I think. So this should give me Delirium, which is nice. I think I just want more permission. I guess I'll find Helping Hand to make that draw better, but... Okay, did draw Helping Hand. So we go Helping Hand, Mentor. Now we'll Alpine Moon the Celestia Sanctuary. I'll keep that on top. My opponent is Summoner's Pacting in response for Endurance. And I just win if I Alpine Moon Celestia Sanctuary. And before force of negation. I think we've won four or five matches in a row ever since the selfie insult, you know, asked us if we ever play good decks. Maybe we do. I really don't want to mulligan this, but let's be disciplined. Then regret our decision, but still go to five. Guess let me put back the mending. I'm gonna try to save the bobble, possibly. Let's keep the counter spell. Arid Mesa. I feel like Arid Mesa is most often creativity right now, but it looks like they're like red aggro deck. Burn. Wow. <laughs> not, not the most common deck in modern. I did just put back my life gain spell too, which feels not the best. I bricked on my archaeologist on my mold of five. Okay, maybe, the, maybe we can lose after all. I'm going to play the bubble now because of rolling vortex. Legler, thank you for the 13 months. Welcome back. Appreciate you. At the very least, our mana hasn't been painful this game. That's a call say. I I like I like bantering. I like the I like I like the back and forth despite <laughs> I, I I would hope I don't seem like I don't. Why I like being here. Glad you like it this stream. I, think I am just going to counterspell the Rift Bolt here. Make sure I can just use this mana now. <laughs> yeah, good old Horn Turtle. The one matchup where I really would have liked that mending <laughs> and been punished for attacking with Archaeologist. Flame Rift. Okay, we're both at <laughs> four less life. My top card is Faithful Mending. Let's freaking go. So I'm going to cast my Preordain. Uh, I probably should have kept the Preordain. I'm going to bottom both of these, though. And then I, I, I do need a Clock, so I'm going to I'm gonna play the Channeler and be, like, a little scared of Skullcrack. I think I could also attack here. It's bad if they have Searing Blaze, but Searing Blaze isn't the most likely. And, and again, I, I do just need need the to win this race. They play Mountain. Do they have Searing Blaze? They have Lightning Bolt that targets me. And then they have Skewer the Critics that targets the Channeler. So they're going to put me to a spot where I'm dead to another burn spell uh, before the Mending. My next card is Unholy Heat. Not the most relevant. Get up to five life. I guess I'm going to Heat the Guide. Keep getting in. When I play land, I have Faithful Mending. Yeah, we saw Pest Control. A lot, a lot of chatter about it so far. It's a cool card. It'll see some play. They have main phase skull crack me when I have Faithful Mending in the yard. Shout out, Burn Players. We love ya. So 
So this is just two mana gain two. Dump some stuff in the yard. Go, go, Horn Turtle. It's like a third or fourth damage. Yeah, they're actually mono red, which is interesting. Dead to uh, Flame Rift. Got some spies. Hope to see it. Lava spikes me down to one. I need them to brick at some point, maybe. Unless we draw a counter spell, I guess. Oh, whatever. Great. Great read that. So a creature of theirs isn't like a lethal attack. I'm just going to get, keep getting in. My opponent has not bricked on a burn spell so far. This is kind of the moment of truth where I'm at 3. I'm going up to 5 next turn. They find a spell. It is it is Sokinzon. They find Sokinzon. You were right. They had spice. Holy guacamole. So I'm going to go down to 1 life point. I think I'm just flashing back Mending and attacking for four and like hoping they draw a land. I mean, they have four lands as well. I'm just talking about the last returns. It's, uh, you, no, I'm actually. Uh, I don't know. Very little matters here. So, okay. So I can now potentially play around Goblin Guide or Swift Spear. I think that makes sense because I just have counterspell. So like I'm beating I'm beating like their next card being a burn spell now, so I think I should just play around Goblin Guide or Swift Spear by not attacking. Can we draw a bolt? I only have one bolt in the deck, so playing towards it's kind of rough. Yeah, they find the burn spell. Ugh, super close though, on our mold of five. Tough game. Probably winnable. I like how painful our mana is. I'm trying to breach, a little bit worried about rolling vortex. Scolding this looks okay. Uh, I don't think they have sanctifiers. Archaeologist look blocks that creatures pretty well. Probably don't need the scoldings. Yeah, that's true. If they didn't, if they had to just held that for a skull cramp, skull cramp, skull clamp, we, we were never winning anyways, I guess. I'm just gonna end one breach. Talked about the Cole Fervent Champ Lotus Ring combo and Pioneer Hammer. Uh, <laughs> I haven't talked about it specifically there. I don't know. Seems hard to assemble. These kind of like three card combos are usually not that good, but it is kind of nice that these other cards are kind of individually okay in your list. Okay, I'm going to be on the play here. Um, I think let's keep. Certainly keeping that on top. No one drop, huh? Maybe lightning bolt, of course. I don't think I want that so bad. I'm gonna go ahead and get um archive here. Since it doesn't seem like my opponent necessarily has a creature. Let's keep the preordain for now. Draw two cards. So let's maybe keep the mending in the yard, draw the breach. This is my only underworld breach. Not sure. I'm gonna use the bubble now because of rolling vortex again. What the fuck? Three man enchantment. Players can't gain. You were right about the spice. Players can't. They bolt the archaeologist. What the hell? Okay. Players can't gain life. Damage can't be prevented. All damage is dealt as though its source had wither. Love it. Also the worst card I've ever seen simultaneously. I've got a couple purges for that too. I just you know, don't need to care about it. Because so I do have been a mentor. Um, which is good news. I'm just going to get a surveil land in a turn and then be nice to like find a land either off my draw step surveil or preordain to go like land or a helping hand, preordain, hold up counter spell. I can't believe they bolted my archaeologist also after 
<laughs> that not and, and just didn't have a creature in their hand. Oh, my Thundering Falls is in the yard. Dang. Makes Goblin Guide overpower archaeologists. I don't know. I don't know if I would agree that that's great <laughs> against us, but it, it has text, I guess. Do they have surgical extraction? Are they reading this? I don't know. Dude, the modern leagues are so sick at the moment. They're so fun. They have not been this fun in a long time. Yeah, Ramming Up Ruins is so cool here, too. Takes who? 16 months? Thank you. Welcome back. Incredible. So maybe I'll bring those stern scoldings back in. <laughs> or in for the first time. A lot worse than the draw. Shard volleys me. Probably correct the... Get one more monk token here. I'm pretty sure I can crack back for lethal with the, the breach. And we know that they can't gain life on, on my turn here because there's everlasting torment in play. Have you cooked with root maze plus amulet yet? Nothing good. Yeah, I don't think that card is very good. Um, Double red for bolt, no. What do you mean? I need to tap a red source to cast the breach, right? It won. Oh, they may board out the ball landings, I don't know. Oh yeah, for us, <laughs> that's a card. Well, I'm gonna keep. Spins a Rift Bolt turn one. Which is good. I wasn't I was kind of weak to a you know turn one creature, right? Nice to be able to force a rolling vortex if if they're if they're even playing that card, of course. Dude, I can really outdo Mingu on his uh stern scolding tweets if I <laughs> if I get to stern scolding a ball lightning this match. Put it in the tank here. I almost feel like they're gonna force a rage, and then all of a sudden force a rage will, will somehow work. <laughs> But I don't think, I still don't think that card lets you attack for six <laughs> uh, without just spending three mana on it. Leyland decks getting popular is Choke Boil worth boarding and John. Yeah, probably. Probably have like at least one. You also want to play some Pick Your Poisons. Possibly play Pick Your Poison, Percy, please. Yeah, I got Breach in my hand. I got Mending. Every every turn, a nice surprise. Okay, let's hold up the counter spell here. I'd probably counter that three man enchantment because I have Mending in my hand. Although I'd have to fetch Shock maybe. Be nice maybe to just stern scolding ball lightning and get a surveil land. I really, I just want to start scolding a ball lightning so bad. Uh, ashes or Ragman. Okay, let's. I, a card I'm shocked is in their deck again. Every turn. <laughs> Every turn, I'm like, wow. Didn't expect them to have that one. It's always good to be, like, at 16, I guess 15 life against burn with, you know, counter spell, a little life gain in hand, and them only have three cards. Hundred percent has browbeat. We'll see. Uh, probably just such a card. So there's a swift spear. 
probably supposed to be using Unholy Heat on this. Alright, you may skull crack me. Can we change the deck at all? Yeah, I've just been running it back today. It's been going pretty well. No skull crack, huh? I guess I discard the breach. Closer to delirium. I don't have bobble at the moment. It's kind of weird since that's my my only breach. But you know, this whole game has been kind of weird, right? Same guy you faced last week playing Bogart Ram Gang. Seems like they've updated the list some. Against most burn players, I'm, you know, kind of like snap countering that. And against this burn player, we are going to try to counter like a three drop. So I'm out of surveil lands. Let's go ahead and grab second white source. Could grab second Stevens here. I guess I'll play this demons. I was kind of thinking I would just want to loot it away with mending, but at this moment we care mostly about getting delirium and gaining life off mending more than we care about the efficient card selection. I kind of feel like this is bait for ball lightning, but I have to take it. Which is kind of just a funny sentence, huh? Rolling vortex. Okay. Funny draw. I think I'm supposed to main phase the Mending Fleshback, get Delirium, start clocking them as fast as I can. They uh, will definitely activate the Vortex, but you know, I've been, you know, I'm kind of so I'm trading two for two life for three damage, but it's almost the same thing here. Certainly keeping that. So I'm going to 15. I cannot bolt on this game. I only have one bolt and I'm out of breaches and my bolt's in the yard. They shard volley a channeler and then they play a goblin guide. Okay, going to be a tough game. My top card is Celestial Purge, which is a pretty interesting one. I'm probably purging the goblin guide just as doing more damage a turn. Was it worth keeping third DRC for faster clock? Maybe. We're trying to dig for a counter spell. I did find. I think I still graveyard a land if I surveil into one. It's just like there's another land on top. I really don't want it. <laughs> uh, it seems about worth keeping. I mean, it's a little awkward that they know about it. Better than the average draw. Have a lot of sorcery speed burn in their deck too. They're lava spike rift bolt skewer. I'm down to six. My opponent is going down to eight, then down to seven. Oh, sorry, I'm down, I'm down to seven. Gotta really remember not to pitch up this force. Okay, second counter spell <laughs> that probably gets the job done. As long as they don't pitch this force, they are just gonna die to my next channeler attack. So this card does matter because if my opponent has exquisite firecraft, I need to not die to the uncounterable burn spell there. Cool deck opponent. <laughs> Cavern of Souls Ball Lightning, that would be that's so sick. Good match. All right, let's get a Monastery Mentor Trophy prediction. We won two to our first league, then we four won the second, now we're three and oh, so we're eight and three on the day.
a lot of times how you're winning is like you fill you fill up your graveyard right you fill up your graveyard with a helping hand a mentor you fill it up with archaeologist and drc and then you go breach helping hand your mentor um helping hand your mentor and then just go crazy <laughs> not any deck check there's a lot of a lot of off-stream failures all the time and on-stream failures too Keep that. So where are they playing Selfie's list? No, they're playing my list last time. Maybe still playing it. They pitched another Grieve. They take my helping hand. I know I'm drawing a flooded strand as one of my two draws. We'll be getting, we're able to get Delirium no matter what they take. I'm assuming you consider updated Esper build. This this is the updated Esper build. Like this lets you splash red instead of black, which is like the much better splash color. Hmm. All right, let's lightning bolt. It's maybe better to fetch actually. Not that it, it we got punished or anything, but maybe better to fetch because of Bowmasters. That's the last big failure brewed up. I don't know. <laughs> we, we've been we've been on a heater lately for sure. I don't know. A lot of times things go better off stream than on stream. Hard question to answer. So many failures to sift through. Um, yeah, let's, let's draw the the channeler next turn. And keep this counter spell up. We could have Liliana. Oh, I sorry. I should have saved the bobble. The the. Since they can just have a. Uh, or since, since we know we, we want to draw this and we want to go channel or double bobble next turn. Could get rewarded if the card underneath is good. So they're drawing Sunken Citadel. They play Demolition Field per turn and then they can actually cut me off of a color. Yeah, the fields are going to be really, really good against us. Pretty sure because I drew exactly Helping Hand with the Mentor, I just slammed the Mentor, and if they kill it, I get the Helping Hand with Counterspell up. How much off-stream playing do I tend to do per week? I do a lot more deck building off-stream than I do actually playing at this point. Um, that hasn't always been the case, but that has been the case lately. Um, but you know, it just kind of depends. It's kind of just a stream preps when it's prepped. I'd, I'd say between like two and five hours a night. So no creatures in the yard to helping hand. Wouldn't that become a mana floater? I guess it didn't matter since that spot <laughs> changed my ways. I guess I maybe should have just main phased, surveilled a, or got a surveil land because I could have cast the helping hand sometimes. Pretty sure we counter this. Kind of a little annoying that I like. I wish I could just sack a monk token. Can grave with this, we can helping hand it, you know, worst case scenario. Okay, so any non-creature spell is so good here. Is this one good enough though? So if I unholy heat like my own token, then I get to attack my opponent for seven and put them to one life after their ring damage. Is that better than playing around shielded? I think I would just rather play around shielded here. Because that's really, that's really like the only way they get out of this. Think the Demir Beans creature is going to be nearly as broken as Beans. Um, I don't know. It, it 
So like it isn't as good as beans in general being like it doesn't always draw a card by its when it when you cast it, it is easier to kill because it's a creature, it isn't legendary, it's two colors instead of one. But on the um on the flip side of that, it works with more cards than Bean works with, so could be as broken, but uh would just be like a little different. Be pretty different. So I got punished for not playing for playing around Shielded. It seemed like a reasonable thing to do at the time. How would you adapt this deck to Timeless? Replace Preordain with Brainstorm and add Treasure Cruise some amount. Uh, you play Looting over Mending, maybe. Uh, to, so, to some extent, like I don't think you should play a Mentor deck in Pioneer. It's a it's a format where Luris is legal. Wait, do they not have a ring? Okay, they do have a ring. Would a minor green splash or pick your poison side be okay? No, you just put just play wear tear. If empty just show me hours you have on it. It, it. People they actually show the hours when they do like the mocks, which I, I don't know. I, I have a lot of hours obviously, but also like I don't know, I do it as a full time job, so <laughs> it's kinda not any different from seeing how many hours you work for me. Bloodbraid into Charlotte's into Sora draws two. I think so, yeah. It's a lot of colors. So they do have the Shieldred. They're going to go up to six life. Fetchland or the Steam Vents. Can get the job done here. Okay, they, they Edict, which is good news. Um, also, they're just dead on board, so that's good news too. <laughs> but would I have been able to trigger Prowess? I would not have been able to, but just exactly he's dead on board. We'll take it. Uh, very nice to be up a game here. Uh, let me see. It posted their last build. Were they playing any Bowmasters? They're playing one Bowmaster, four Grief, four Voidwalker. Seems like enough for me to play. Scolding and Purge. Um... Curse is kind of nice against the Undying effects. Yeah, we've been talking a lot about pest control today. I'm going to cut a Mending, Ephemerate. Archaeologist is also kind of like... It's okay in this matchup. It's actually pretty good against all their Edicts. No, I want all the Archaeologists. Edict meta. Yeah, in this matchup, you're just like a bit more comfortable to just cast your monastery mentor and then and then it die and then they spend their turn killing it or they spend some amount of resources killing it and you go off. They also kind of have a harder time. I um, guess we keep this. They kind of have a harder time triggering revolt for push than some other lists do. I almost yield until end of turn, then I realize I need to be able to respond to a Void Walker with a fetch. Can we keep this on top? If I try to solve this game with the Toro Charlie. Yeah, there's, there's so much the Toro stuff. Like, yeah, you can do some Cascade stuff with it. I really want to play Norin the Wary Aether Vial with it. Like, you get to go, you get to draw so many cards, but it doesn't necessarily seem like the most competitive thing you could do with, with Satoro. Let's just get another Surveil Land. Graveyard this Monastery Mentor. Let's fucking go. Huge hit. Yeah, also draws off like the affinity creatures. I don't see a cling. Oh, so I, I do see one cling to dust. I think they're gonna field me, knowing that I don't have a basic plains or basic mountain. Do you draw two if you cascade into Satoro while you have a Satoro? Yeah, you should, and then I think you legend rule. I believe both triggers would always go in the stack there. Opponent. Really, really in the tank here. I feel like I really want to win this game. The matchup seems tough. All the fields are so backbreaking against us. Okay, opponent takes a game action. I kind of think they're going to cling here, maybe. So I just wanted to untap. Maybe I, maybe I should have mendinged. Not sure. 
just feel like the white cards can maybe get kind of stranded here sometimes. Reef pitch not dead after all. Let's, you know, counter that. Kind of happy if they just slam the one ring. Super happy if they slam shielder in. Maybe maybe a little preemptive happiness. I don't, we don't have a bobble yet to go with their breach, I suppose. I think we just start off with a mending. Hopefully we can make a few monk tokens here. Okay, so graveyard one, two, and then... Channeler helping hand. Feels better than the average top deck there. Could we we really want to dig for a bobble, of course. Are we overexerting into damnation? I mean, I built their deck, and I have like sometimes one or two damnations in the sideboard. Um, but I we also have to overcommit because of the ring. Yeah. Okay, game three. Yeah, you just, you just have to commit into the ring. There is not really, I think, like a super good argument for playing that game very passively. All right, game two on the play. Keeping this one. Upper, sure that was good. That was a uh, brief scam pause. They don't tend to play a lot of Bowmasters, but let's maybe not just like lose the snap, lose the game if they have it. Let's keep the preordain, I suppose. Okay, the edict. Try to find a land. Do find a land. Pretty sure we're holding up our mana here. Opponent with no third land drop. Uh, I'm going to cast the Mending. It's kind of weird, but I, I think because especially they, especially because they can't Fatal Push, it's just a spot to slam the slam the Mentor. They've already used one Shieldred's Edict also. They have a second Shieldred's Edict. We at least get, you know, a Monk token. It was better to keep archaeologist over counterspell. Not sure. So I'm gonna take my unholy heat and then scam the grief. Oh, okay. Just an evoker. It's fine. Maybe should have kept the scolding. Nice that we're not as weak to field of ruin this game. So we get to draw two fresh ones, plus we have Mending in the yard still. So... Helping Hand Mentor... I think I'm just going to flash this back now. Extra Prowess Damage Minimum, could also find Bobble, could find Preordain. All right, looking like we have a pretty good chance to play our trophy match at least. We'll see. Don't want to count too many chickens yet.
Stomp card is Fatal Push, which they can't turn on Revolt for. They can push a token, I guess. I guess they can have a, a, a second Grief. Okay, they don't. Prediction already live. I would love a Monastery Bentor Trophy. Um, This would be an easy mulligan were Surveil Lands not a thing. I think it's still mulligan with Surveil Lands existing. Keep the heat actually. Any spells better than non creature? Yeah, but it doesn't trigger off the first spell you cast a turn, but it's not that relevant on the turn you unearth it. Mirrors Outlaws feel like Lord of the Rings more than the standard set. Yeah, Outlaws is gonna be huge for modern. It is it is gonna be very much like bigger standard set. I mean, I feel like I've come prepared enough for Tron today. Got Two Alpine Moons and three Force of Negations. Hard to be like, hard to be playing much more than that. I'll also, I think, draw that Helping Hand. Don't think I want the Fountain yet, necessarily. Think of New Pest Control. It's like, you know, it's going to be like a fringe sideboard card, but it, it'll be more, it'll be fringe. Oh, Blue Tron. Okay, we're screwed. It's more so fringe, not because, um, not because it's like a bad card, but because it's black and white and targets strategies that are not like super popular at the moment. So, see, I'm not not expecting it to necessarily do a ton, but it, it is it is a very good good sideboard card, and you'll you'll see it'll see some play. It's kind of hoping for a regular counter spell instead of remand because we have double helping hand. It's high noon a big enough upgrade to play over Rule of Law. I mean, obviously, obviously you're going to play it over Rule of Law, but you're just, you weren't going to play Rule of Law anyways. Um, it, it, you'll you'll say we're going to card that sometimes, but also Cascade is like nearly non-existent and modern at the moment, so it's it's kind of a tough sell. Um, I because I have double helping hand, I'm just going to go ahead and cast cast one here on the mentor. And if they have Tron, we if they have Natty Tron, we probably lose. And if they don't, we're probably in good shape. Force of Negation, pitch Force of Negation. Yeah, Pest Control and Vintage seems really nice, especially because you can cycle it. Okay, no ring is good news. Hmm. Was certainly not expecting this. I think I'm just gonna let it happen. And then counterspell something if I need to counter it, or uh, unholy heat plus ephemerate if I don't. To make a high noon deck. Oh yeah, so high noon is probably not gonna be a card you're gonna build around super hard. It does work well with some cards, like spell quellers, a card that comes to mind. Um but I, I doubt that you're just going to like build around it super hard. I could be wrong about that, though. They're really countering this? Repeal the Mentor. Then this is really where the Ephemerate comes in nicely. Where not only do we get to protect our Mentor and make a Monk to token, but we get to rebound the Ephemerate, make another Monk token, and target the Archaeologist. Basically one mana win the game. <laughs> oh yeah, you can play Rule of Law and Zerda in the same deck. That's kind of fun. Or the, the new Rule of Law. Oh man. That was, that was like the most satisfying ephemerate I've ever cast. Uh, we don't have another creature in the yard at the moment. I'm just going to still take this helping hand. All right, just crack in for seven. Eyeing some plot cards to this deck. The new, like, blue one might be okay. The The, the whole format's going to be pretty different between Thunder Junction and uh, MH3. You don't need to sweat it so much, right? Nice to win game one. 
I'm gonna bring in my force negations. I'm gonna bring them in my alpine moons and then they have enough instant speed interaction that the Teferi is almost certainly good enough to bring in. Uh, Bolt is better than heat. I probably want between one, one, zero to two heats. Let's, let's probably plan for two at the moment. Would not be surprised if my opponent brought in a bunch of, or some amount of graveyard hate. We could sideboard something like this. Looks okay. I've been doing a lot of trimming post board. The new prowess got plot. That, that card's really good. I, I don't think, I, I think that that card would usually be the top end of a curve of a curve of any deck I'd play with it. So I, I'm unlikely to want to pair it with the card Monastery Mentor necessarily. But um, the card does seem good. Why did Ephemerate protect Mentor? Um, so when you have it, when you have an object leave the battlefield and then come back with a flicker effect like Ephemerate, Ephemerate being the most common flicker effect in modern, um, whatever's targeting, whatever was, whatever, whatever was targeting it, uh, it, it, the mentor is treated like a new object. So whatever was target doesn't have that, that same target in play anymore. And it's kind of, kind of unintuitive. I'm going to crack main phase of the play around to tide binder, I guess, slash nimble obstructionist. And then I guess, I guess it's not actually that important for me to hold up counter spell with them only having two mana. So I can maybe just play both these one drops here. Um, let's keep the archaeologist, and then we'll name whatever Tron piece is not in play, or just power plant, I guess. So no valid target anymore. Yeah, exactly. All right, another Lauren revealed, another island. Plays the island. I think I don't want to like have to counterspell a Tidebinder this game, so let me just play my island here. Why name what isn't in play? So if you name what is in play, like this, this, this would just be able to tap for a blue mana. But if I name what isn't in play, they still can't put, they still can't get Tron, but they, but they don't have an extra color for no reason. I'll counterspell a subtlety, I guess. Just. Kind of hard to not point a counter spell at a four mana two for one, despite uh, me being kind of scared of the one ring here. I'll take a lightning bolt for Karn at least. They do have a one ring, which is worst case scenario, especially when my hand doesn't really have much going on. Scratch that does have plenty going on now. <laughs> okay. So I think what I'm going to end up doing here is putting this Monastery Mentor on top with the intention to go Channeler into Lightning Bolt, Surveil the Mentor into the Graveyard so that I can then Helping Hand my mentor into play and then cast breach. Yeah, but you just against Tron always always name the one they don't have in play. It's it's I don't think it's ever correct to name the one that's in, in play. Teferi's an interesting draw. I guess I only have those single white mana though. Let me attack for three first. When it is down to 13. I cast Helping Hand, Target Monastery Mentor. My opponent hard cast a Force of Negation. Have to cast this Underworld Breach, I think. I'm just not doing anything else with my mana. I may bolt them down to 10 and down to 8 over there. Let me cast Preordain first. Finding a Bobble would be nice. Could also find a fetch land. I think I think I haven't played a land this turn. We could find a you know, forces. Forces is kind of perfect, I think, since like if I bolt them, they're gonna be just kind of I, I think I just yeah, I think I just bolt them now. Kind of weird. 
Okay, maybe perfect wasn't the right, <laughs> right, right word, but I think this just makes sense. Just bolt them down to eight, then they're going to go down to, or down to ten, then, then down to eight, and then the main thing that they can do to get out of this is play another copy of the One Ring, and if I just, if I just force that and then they hit them with the Channeler again, it's going to be tough for them to win. Can we have save breach your man next turn, or is that too slow? I we just, No, we, it's just too slow against an active One Ring. We just have to, like, Keep going, I think. Born Up the Wind. Uh, we had a Dono deck with Born Up the Wind back when we did Dono decks, and we went like 0-4 with it. And That's the three-man enchantment. You like target something, cast whatever you targeted. And then it was like, it was a painful Dono deck, so I have not returned to it in a long time. Oh, that card. What's the other card I'm thinking of? I think it also has... I think, it's a re I think I'm thinking of a Release the Wind. But I don't know, like, it's like Quicken, but for all spells, it's not something you can really build around, I think, in modern. Well, it's kind of weird how long they've tanked on this ring. It's probably bad news. Their hand is probably amazing. Keep this on this counter spell on top. Resolved. And they play an Expedition map. Two cards in hand, or two, two mana up. Use a Toro. That card is really good and is really good with a lot of different things. It'll it'll likely be a good modern card. I'm most excited about it with Nor and the Wary, because Nor is like it's it's really, really good with that, and they both work with Aether Vial, but you you it, it's probably better to pair it with a more competitive card than Nor and the Wary. <laughs> so does my opponent have a blast zone in their deck? They don't. They reveal Oda War of the Soaring City, which will allow them to bounce their ring. And then potentially just replay it if they have nothing else. They would also they would need a land to do that too. Yeah, playing around Ragavan for the reverse psychic damage. Yeah, Satoru just is like it's so good with so many modern cards. It's it's like even hard to talk about how many cards it works with. It works with the incarnations. It works with ephemerate. It works with reanimation. It works with creatures that come back from the graveyard. It works with Aether Vial. It works with Nor and the <laughs> the Wary. It works with Cascade. It just like just does so much. Bounce Moon. Um, if they bounce Moon, they're either like down a lot of blue mana or they're down a lot of Tron mana. Which seems like that's good for me because of the counter spell. Yeah, but but maybe that is their plan. Certainly want to just take it down here. Yeah, Norn is legal and modern. There's been some occasional decks that have played Norn. They have nine cards in their hand. One of them is an Odawara. Taps four, untaps. You can tide binder your own ring trigger, right? So they do Oda War of the Alpine Moon. So now they have no more blue mana available to them, but they do have nine colorless mana. They're tapping seven of it. Nine of it. They can't Ulamog me. Could this be Emrakul? If was one thing that's very funny about Emrakul is my channeler still has to attack. It is Emrakul. So, if I can just surveil any irrelevant card to the top, my channeler still has to attack despite them having Emrakul. So yeah, I'll surveil this Flooded Strand to the top. We've had some amazing matches this league. But even, even on my Emrakul turn, they'll be forced to... They'll be forced to attack with the channeler. I mean, I would get an extra turn anyways, right? But it's not very often that you die on the turn you are... <laughs> controlling someone with Emrakul. Yeah, and we and we have just trophied with Monastery Mentor. Ever play any good decks, Selfie? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I liked it. I don't know. I don't think the deck's the most amazing or anything, but I just kind of think it's proof that the league, leagues are just really open, and as long as you have, like, a powerful strategy that's, like, kind of new and tuned, you can do some winning. Can do some winning. Yeah, definitely a great trophy rate. And like uh, unironically, like I really feel like the banning of uh, of a violent outburst has opened up the format to a point where I can like I can I can do this kind of stuff again. <laughs> Modern is like good and open and you can just go just go crazy like this. Um okay. So what what were we were ten and three on the day? 
It's pretty good. I'm going to call the stream here. I, I promise.